Thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Okay, welcome everyone to a new episode of Myth Bust Monday, where every Monday we're gonna take a look at some popular fitness or nutrition idea, look at where that idea got started, and then find out whether it's in fact true or false based on the most recent scientific evidence. This week we're gonna be looking at the idea that energy drinks are harmful to your health. So I found that energy drinks like uh, Monster and Red Bull have actually become really popular in fitness circles. And I think it's because of the idea that you can get some sort of energy boost without any kind of caloric cost, um, especially with the, the diet varieties of these energy drinks. Um, so they can energize you for a workout without having to take in any extra calories, which is pretty beneficial, I think, or at least people perceive it that way. Um, from a dieting perspective. And in my experience, it's common to see folks slam two or three or more of these a day. And their popularity is just increasing in general, uh, especially for the youth. And according to a 2017 market research report, the energy drink market was valued at $12 billion in the United States alone, and it's projected to double by 2025. However, many people aren't sure of the health effects of these things. Um, so let's take a closer look at what the science has to say. Uh, but first, where was it that this idea originated from? Um, well, it's tough to say exactly where the idea that energy drinks are bad for you comes from, um, but I would say it has at least something to do with the fact that they tend to have really long ingredients lists um, sometimes with names that are kind of difficult to pronounce. And I think that a lot of people have become wary of consuming so-called chemicals. Uh, however, I think that's a term that they don't really mean to use. I think any fundamental entry-level knowledge of chemistry will tell you that everything is made up of chemicals, even water is itself a chemical. And if you were to call water, say, dihydrogen monoxide, its actual chemical name, uh, people may be more wary to consume it, even though that doesn't hold any water in terms of whether or not it's, it's healthy or harmful. Just for a quick example, let's look at the actual ingredients list in one all-natural blueberry. And as you can see, it's a huge list of stuff and it can look fairly intimidating to an uneducated eye. But here's part of the problem that I have with this criticism leveled at energy drinks um, and just more broadly, I guess, synthetic compounds in general, is that first of all, it isn't clear exactly where that line between natural and synthetic sits. I should say, it's not clear how much you have to modify a natural substance so that it becomes synthetic. And secondly, just because something occurs in nature doesn't mean it's good for you. Um, just for example, sharks occur all the time in nature um, and they will kill you if you happen to run into one. Um, and then on the other hand, uh, antibiotics are synthetic, they're man-made and they can save your life uh, if you need them. Um, so this concern with energy drinks is at least in part uh, an appeal to nature fallacy, uh, which isn't necessarily incorrect. Um, I think that in some contexts we do have good reason to be skeptical of some man-made substances and some man-made products. Um, however, that isn't a good enough basis on its own to judge its health value. Um, so I think what we should instead do is look at the actual ingredients list on these products and break them down and look at what the scientific evidence has to say about each of them. So what does the science have to say about the ingredients in energy drinks? Um, well, the ingredients won't look exactly the same between any two energy drink products, uh, but I think examine.com did a really good job of breaking down the science between the 10 most commonly used ingredients in energy drinks. And notice that this list can look more or less scary, uh, depending on if they use the chemical name or not. Um, so for example, on this up energy drink can, vitamin B6 is listed as pyridoxine hydrochloride, um, which may sound scary if you don't know what that is, um, but it's no less vitamin B6 than if it was just called vitamin B6 on the label. And so what I'd like to do is just quickly go through this table here and look at what the evidence has to say. Uh, but first I should probably note that really anything will be harmful at high enough of a dose. If you were to say slam 50 or 100 uh, cans of Monster, um, you would just as likely die probably from uh, an overdose on water or from water toxicity than anything else. Anything can be harmful if you consume enough of it and the poison is always determined by the dose. Um, so whether or not something is harmful is always going to be predicated on how much of that thing you're consuming. Um, so back to the table and we'll start with what doesn't seem to really be doing much of anything, uh, good or bad. 
And so here in the middle, we have a list of three vitamins and a pseudovitamin. So niacin, B6, B12, and inositol. And they're all water-soluble vitamins. So the likelihood for overdose and negative health effects is basically nil, especially at the typical dose. Um, but they also don't do what they're claimed to do, which is improve energy, uh, because unlike actual food, vitamins don't increase energy acutely, um, they don't have any caloric value, unlike actual food, and they're not stimulants say caffeine. And the same thing goes for guarana, uh, which is just a natural form of caffeine, um, but here the dose is almost always too low to do much of anything, good or bad. Uh, and L-carnitine is also overhyped. Uh, while it's actually very effective at improving sperm quality, uh, the dose would have to be about 60 times higher. And carnitine doesn't increase fat burning, except for in cases of carnitine deficiency, which is actually extremely rare in adults without metabolic disorders. Um, so there isn't anything to worry about here at these doses. Up next, we'll look at taurine, which does have some potential benefits, including antioxidant and cardioprotective effects and improved insulin sensitivity. Now, a 2008 toxicology report on the upper limit for daily supplemental taurine consumption across an entire lifetime was three grams. So with one gram being in a can of Monster, uh, this warning may give you some pause when exceeding or nearing, say, three Monsters a day consistently. Uh, however, I think it's worth noting that this same paper acknowledges that much higher levels of taurine have been tested without adverse effects and may be safe, but the data for intakes above those levels just aren't sufficient for a confident conclusion. So up next, we'll look at ginseng. It's supposed to increase focus, and it might do that. One 2010 study showed positive cognitive effects at a 400 milligram dose, but actually a slowing in arithmetic with 200 milligrams compared to placebo. Uh, so you'll probably want at least more than 200 milligrams if taking ginseng for focus. And in terms of negative effects, examine sites of potential for GI distress. And granted, while a 2011 systematic review looking at 57 clinical trials concluded that ginseng generally has a good safety profile and the incidence of adverse effects seems to be low, 16 of the 57 trials did report side effects, uh, but they were mostly related to the GI tract. So things like diarrhea and cramps. Um, so before we get into the two remaining ingredients, which I believe to be uh, the most likely to be problematic. Uh, some of you may note that uh, there's often artificial sweeteners in these drinks. Um, it's most commonly sucralose and ACE K. And luckily my girlfriend Stephanie uh, made a whole video discussing all these sweeteners. Um, so I don't really have to go into too much detail here. I'll just refer you to that video. Um, but the long story short of it is that you'd have to consume something like 32 cans of diet soda uh, just to hit the adequate daily intake for ACE K. You'd have to drink uh, something like six cans of diet soda uh, to hit that adequate daily intake for sucralose. Um, but just keep in mind that the adequate daily intake is a very, very conservative estimate of how much you'd have to drink every day for a lifetime uh, to see no adverse health effects. Um, so the main two potentially harmful things uh, in these energy drinks I would say are sugar and caffeine. And despite my myth bust video on sugar explaining why I don't think that's quite the villain it's often made out to be, uh, I would say it's, it's probably the most potentially harmful thing in these uh, over the long term. And I think this because it basically unnecessarily drives total caloric intake uh, higher and in a way that doesn't really provide any nutritional value. And I think this is especially the case for the high rates of consumption amongst teenagers and youths who are drinking a lot of these and getting a lot of empty calories from the sugar. Um, and so while I wouldn't say that sugar is in and of itself causing direct harm, I wouldn't say that it's toxic, uh, especially not consumed in the doses uh, in these energy drinks. I would say that it is unnecessarily contributing to uh, total daily caloric intake, and especially in the absence of a, a regular exercise routine or regular daily activity, uh, I would say that this could lead to, to problems down the road if it becomes a habit. But of course, this isn't a problem if you just go with the diet or sugar-free versions of these energy drinks, um, which is why I recommend going with diet over the sugary ones um, if you have the option. So that basically leaves us with caffeine, which is of course the main powerhouse behind these energy drinks. Uh, it is the main stimulant ingredient, um, and it definitely is effective. Now, there's a ton of evidence suggesting that it increases alertness, wakefulness, uh, even performance, and of course energy. 
Um, so it is effective. Uh, the question is whether or not it has any deleterious or harmful health effects. And I think it's important to note that many of these popular energy drinks can sometimes contain upwards of 150 milligrams of caffeine, which is four or five times the amount in a regular can of Coke. And as of May 25th of last year, Health Canada filed a safety alert that healthy adults consume no more than 400 milligrams of caffeine per day, which you could easily exceed with a Monster and a pre-workout alone. And a 2017 review on the safety of caffeine mirrored this recommendation. However, they also noted that between 2005 and 2011, there were over 79,000 emergency room visits attributable to overconsumption of energy products containing high levels of caffeine in patients aged 12 years and older. Usually this was due to tachyarrhythmia, or just really fast heart rate from a high dose of caffeine. And many of these cases involved alcohol consumption as well. Uh, so you definitely wanna be careful when combining these substances. Granted, the actual lethal dose of caffeine is about 10 grams. Um, so you'd have to drink something like 50 cans of energy drink uh, just to reach that. However, in powder form, uh, it's quite a bit more dangerous and you could easily reach a lethal dose uh, with just like two teaspoons of pure caffeine powder. So on that note, I think I'll bring this full circle by saying that I think it's unlikely that the individual ingredients in these energy drinks uh, are likely to cause any serious health effects um, on their own. Of course, that's going to depend on how much of them you're consuming. Um, and it also depends on who's consuming them. I think that pregnant and nursing women uh, should really avoid these products because of the caffeine content. And I think that uh, teenagers and children are definitely more susceptible to negative cardiovascular effects uh, from these. Um, so again, it's really gonna depend on how much you're having and who it is that's having it. Um, I'm also open to the idea that while the individual ingredients on their own haven't really been shown to be harmful at the dosages provided, um, it's possible that they could like interact in some way uh, to produce negative health effects. Um, and, and that is quite quite reasonable, uh, but I would say that the evidence for that is, is pretty weak as of now. The Examine article points out the possibility of an interaction between sugar and caffeine that could increase the heart's workload acutely. Um, but again, the severity of this effect will depend on how much you're consuming and your current health state. I would say that if you currently have cardiovascular complications or if you have a history of heart problems in your family, I'd be very careful with these products and especially with caffeine uh, just in general. But otherwise for healthy, active adults, uh, there doesn't seem to be anything particularly harmful, uh, at least about ingredients in these drinks at the dosages provided. Um, sugary energy drinks are probably just best avoided altogether, especially since you can just go with the diet variety or the sugar-free uh, variety and avoid all those extra calories. And I would say it's the high caffeine and high sugar content uh, that's the biggest potential issue, um, not the presence of mysterious chemicals or synthetic ingredients. Um, so bringing this full circle, I would say that this myth is kind of busted. Uh, whether or not these energy drinks are harmful uh, will depend, first of all, on who it is that's consuming them. Uh, so their age, their body weight, and their current health status. And secondly, it'll depend on how much of them you're consuming and how much you personally are comfortable with consuming. Uh, I think will depend on your personal level of risk aversion as much as anything else. Um, as for me personally, actually quite like energy drinks. Um, so I'm comfortable with the risks associated, associated with drinking uh, one of these per day, uh, which in my opinion are actually quite low. Um, however, uh, if you are wanting to play it on the safe side, um, or maybe you have more of a history of, of health problems or you're concerned about that, um, then you may want to err on the side of caution. You may want to really heed Health Canada's advice and pay attention to your total daily caffeine intake. Uh, and you might want to try to keep that below 400 milligrams per day. Um, so guys, that's going to wrap up this week's Mythbus Monday. Uh, I hope that you really liked it. Um, before we go, I want to give a huge shout out to Squarespace for sponsoring this video and say thank you to Squarespace. Um, in case any of you guys aren't aware, uh, Squarespace is an all-in-one creator website platform. And it's actually the platform that I've been using for the last two or three years uh, to run my own website and my own online store. Um, and I think it's a great service because it's really easy to use. Uh, they have fantastic customer support and beautiful award-winning designer custom templates that you can use. And there's just a ton of those uh, to choose from. And I think they all look really aesthetic. So if you guys would like to get started on building your own website or your own online store, you can go to squarespace.com forward slash nippered and you can save 10% off your first purchase today. Thank you again, Squarespace, for sponsoring the video. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to leave me a like if you like the video. Uh, subscribe if you happen to be new to the channel, and I will see you guys all here next Monday.